Hi there, Lloyd Macedo, speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com. Who is Lloyd Macedo and Think Puzzle Branding? The date is 28th July 2018. Time right now is 3 o'clock in the night. Okay, so this is one of my late night videos. So I was asked by a couple of my followers as to what do I think about Sundus. <laughs> Sundus. Sundus Al Katan, who is supposed to be this Kuwaiti makeup artist, beauty lover, beauty lover, makeup artist, Sundus. <laughs> so what do I think about her? Apparently, for those of you who do not know, um, I'll just give you the timeline. It, in Feb, the Philippines declared a ban on expatriate workers who were going to the Gulf state after the body of a 29-year-old domestic worker, Joanna, was discovered in a freezer in Kuwait, a Lebanese national, Nader Isam Asaf, who was employed by, uh, uh, who employed uh, Joanna, confessed to a killing and was later sentenced to death by a Kuwaiti court. Then, uh, because of, um, the, because, you know, the domestic workers, the population is fairly high. Kuwait did feel the pinch. And that is why I, I think they reached out and uh, Kuwait and Philippines came together and issued regulations uh, with regards to workers' rights. Now, um, and the rights that you're talking about is the basic human rights. For example, and for someone who has been in the Middle East knows this, and I know it because I stayed there for 40 years. Arab Muslims, okay, Arab Muslims, the majority, they've had this tendency whereby you need to understand they came from the desert, they were with the camels, all of a sudden they discovered oil, and from being a very conservative culture whereby they would pray to their God in Arabic, read the Arabic holy book, and, uh, you know, stay within their culture, which was fairly closed, where women were covered totally like, you know, black, like, you know, a ninja, a complete black, and men would be total white, and men could go out, women couldn't go out, they would be in their tent. So from being in a culture like that, all of a sudden they were exposed to oil, they were exposed to money, and they tried to become modern. However, the, the outdated practices like having slaves were still pretty rampant and they felt they had this feeling that they were superior why because they had the money they had the wealth just like the egyptians uh, the pharaohs you know if you go to the medieval times where the kings were there and they had slaves and this was not only a practice that was followed only in the east it was also in the west where you had the british okay when you had the british uh, rule the uh, almost the entire globe, they used to treat Asians like slaves. They did that with the Africans also. Uh, you also had United States that tried to do the same. So it was a practice, outdated practice that was followed globally. Okay. However, the West, they got rid of the practice because they realized, listen, we, everyone is equal. United States, uh, even though they claim that everything is equal today, they're still facing a lot of problems. Um, and, uh, you know, U.S. shouldn't point fingers because U.S. has a massive problem themselves. So now you have the East, uh, where you have most of the Arab Muslims, where they are still struggling. They're still struggling to come face to face with the fact that you're living in modern times. So there are a bunch of people who still believe in holding on to the passport. For example, even in Saudi in Bahrain, in Qatar, um, even in UAE, United Arab Emirates, they still hold on to your passport. Sarja free zone, they take your passports. Most of the employers, not multinational companies, but in Dubai, which is supposed to be modern, the local uh, companies, they take your passport. I know this because my sponsor took my passport away from me. Why? Because they feel you shouldn't run away or once in they employ you, you are supposed to be under them. So this was a practice that is followed. Now, given that their upbringing or their exposure to the world, this is their reality. Their reality is, we are Arab Muslims, 
we have the money asians are slaves they are under us they live in that bubble in fact in dubai they lived in that bubble until you had uh, i think it was mohan lal or mamuti a south indian actor who purchased an entire floor of the burj khalifa and then they realized indians are not poor when uh, they had lulu who is uh, a supermarket um, retail owner who is who turned out to be the richest man uh, in billions of dollars you had a mickey jaktiani who is an indian uh, based in the uk and uh, came down to ua he is one of the largest retail stores and he's worth billions so they really shit you know indians asians are rich you have pratham tata who had come down to meet sheikh mohammed so they realized okay asians are not poor asians are rich asians are powerful so in the same way they they started realizing that okay we think we are rich we think we are big but oh there's a big big world out there that is why the arabs when they are in their own country they'll wear their abaya they'll wear their muslim dress they will say allah akbar and all that loudly but the minute they go to the west the minute they go to united kingdom or they go to united states they'll not wear their arabic dress because you know uh, you you'd get someone who just say terrorist and beat them up or you know if they say allah all of a sudden you'll get people running away because the media portrays islam as a religion that is associated with terrorists so you know you you have these problems and challenges that are everywhere okay uh, however for someone who has traveled around the world who has met people of different cultures different nationalities you would have a very broader view that is why the arab muslims who have traveled around the world who have met other people who have taken leadership positions they understand that you need to treat everyone equally okay now sundusi <laughs> find a name so funny sundus sundus al katan who is supposed to be beautiful i'll get to that she is a media influencer with 2.3 million followers because she's in the beauty and fashion industry she didn't like this new rule okay she has a right to her opinion i'll tell you that much she has a right to her opinion and she believed no 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 this is very bad how dare you give them uh, more than a day off in a week it's that's four days in a month oh my goodness how can you do that uh, that was according to her and she also found it pretty shocking and atrocious that you could actually give them their passport to so empowering someone giving them their passport which is supposed to be legally and internationally it's a law that you cannot take someone's passport because the passport belongs to the government so for her in a small little world given the fact that she is only based in kuwait she is famous in you know kuwait and the middle east i never heard of her okay so there are so many people who have not heard of her i spoke to uh, media influencers around the world they don't know who she is in fact i didn't know who she is until this this news blew out out of proportion and I didn't even take interest until someone asked me about her. So she lives in the small little Kuwaiti little world where she's a superstar in Kuwait. So she felt, oh, how dare you, you know, give them their passport? You shouldn't give them their passport. So for her, in her limited upbringing, given the fact that she she has not gone out of her small little well, a small little you know frame of being a superstar in Kuwait, uh, well, she found it shocking. and she gave her opinions which i believe is her right she can give an opinion she said the ex- passport of a expat should be the position of the employer why she said this is because this is how they behave this is how they act this is the how they have been. this is this has been her upbringing where she has been thought and she has been made to believe that muslim arabs are superior the people who are arab rich they are superior asians who don't have money are inferior they are servants okay so this is her upbringing uh, she even gave a statement that said uh, this is what i'm reading from the news articles botox is more important than filipino domestic worker rights so this is her upbringing these are her values okay and uh, she what she said is i have a right as a kafil as a sponsor to keep my employees passport because i am paying 5000 dollars 
as a deposit to the government to keep this worker. So, uh, and she also believes a servant in the house um, should be grateful for whatever they have. Okay, now she issued this statement and then there was this massive public backlash. Everyone like, how dare you this thing and we want an apology and blah, blah, blah. Everyone started jumping on her and I don't think she was prepared for that because what she did is she deleted the video clip, which I wonder why do you do that? You know, if you have nothing to hide, why delete a video clip? So that's, I'll get to that also coming later. So the brands that were associated with her was M. Uh, McCalf, I, you know, I don't know these ladies' brands, Chelsea Boutique, uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills, MAC Cosmetic, Too Faced, oh, nice name, Max Factor Arabia, Japanese brand Shushido, South Korean Uteed House, forgive me if it's pronounced wrong. However, there were other sponsors uh, or other big brands that just didn't care. They don't care because uh, I don't think they are very bothered about Filipinos and Asians who don't have the money. They just want people who are rich and who are Arabic. So brands like Al Jazeera Perfumes, Beauty Pop, DXB, that is Dubai, Yara Jewelers, the Cambridge Weight Plan, B Organic, Equity Honey Company, online store uh, that was Booty Cart, or something and I'll okay so Al Katan sells all the range of cosmetics with these brands and obviously they shouldn't be bothered because they don't care about people who don't have money they don't care about uh, Asians they don't care about Filipinos they don't care about Filipinos who are poor so for them what they felt is fuck you you know we don't give a damn whether your feelings are heard um, while these global brands they were like okay we have a public image we have to show that we you know, consider everyone equal. I'm sorry, we want to distance ourselves from you. Okay, now you need to understand that Kuwait has a population of 4 million people out of which uh, 660,000, that's like half a million, okay, are domestic workers and out of which roughly it seems 250,000 to 276,000 are fil from Philippines, okay. Now, what you need to understand is the Human Rights, the Global Human Rights Watch Group has flagged Middle East countries for human rights violation from Dubai to Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi, Oman, all of them, all of them, they have been flagged for human rights violation. That doesn't mean other countries like US and UK are perfect. Everyone has their sins, so to speak, but the Middle East is much more, much more because they can get away with it. Okay. Now, people have said, take your revenge and, you know, bring her down. And people have even told me, look, I, you know, destroy her. Let me give you my views. Now, I will give you my views and what do I think about it? Number one is just because you think you're beautiful doesn't necessarily make you intelligent. Now, if someone is beautiful, let's say someone is, someone has beautiful body and face that does not mean that they're intelligent. I know a lot of beautiful uh, women, a lot of good looking guys, they look amazing, but they don't have intelligence. You need to understand, some of them don't even have the character. All they have is just beauty, okay? Just physical beauty. So, Sundus, just because Sundus is, is, cons is beautiful, doesn't mean that she's intelligent. So give her a break. The second thing is, I don't know what people define as beauty, but slapping on some powder on your face, putting cement, like, you know, layers and layers of painting your face and putting all the fake. I don't know if you call that beautiful. Okay. I just call that person a beautician, beautician or a painter or a, yes, there is an art on how to paint someone's face and look enhanced. But that doesn't necessarily make you beautiful. And to tell you a fact, just as someone looks at my face and says, yuck, what is that shit on his face? And he looks ugly. People from New Zealand find me cool. People from the US say, wow. People from Australia say, whoa, that's, you know, something. While on the other hand, you have Indians say, hey, what is this? What is this? Okay. Uh, I'm Indian, so I can uh, Malayalis. I'm half Malayali. They go like this. And... Uh, then you have Arab Muslims, and I know this because I have traveled so many times to the Middle East before. 
when an Arab Muslim looks at me, you stop the Allah, Allah, oh Allah, they go like this. In fact, in aircrafts, many Muslims have actually stood up, shouted at the uh, cabin crew and said, Shaitan, Shaitan means devil. I'm not sitting next to the devil, Satan. I was apparently the Antichrist. So I've experienced this. Now, do I feel upset? Like, oh, you hurt my feelings. No, I don't feel upset because this is their limited thinking. This is their limited upbringing. This is their pea brains. Just as when they would look at me and say, oh, Shaitan, devil, Antichrist, I, Allah, they would go like this. In the same way, they shouldn't feel bad when someone from the West, oh, ISIS, terrorist, oh, Allah, but bomber, you know, they shouldn't feel bad. So just as you have, you know, categorically uh, boxed a person and branded a person, someone should brand you. So then it's fair. So don't go around calling people, Allah, Allah, and Allah, and you think you're holy and then feel bad when someone does the same to you. So, you know, tit for tat. Now, the third one is, the third point is, she has undergone either Botox or surgery to make sure that she looks, you know, lips are plum and everything is proper and all that. It's like, you know, there was this really ugly girl, very, very super ugly girl, and she went uh, operations to get her nose done chin done, cheek done, teeth done, everything. And she looked amazing. The guy married her. When they had a baby, the baby didn't look like that surgically repaired face. The baby looked like that ugh, mutant how she was. So what I'm trying to tell you is externally, she has repaired her face to appeal to a crowd. But inside, she has not repaired anything. Inside, it's the same what she is. So give her a break. Okay, that's how she is. Now, point number four is I've showed her photograph to a couple of people who are in the fashion industry who are, and I didn't tell them who she is. The, fun, the thing is, most of them didn't find her beautiful. I personally don't find anything beautiful about her. I think she is, she looks like, you know, like a mannequin, like fake. Like there's nothing natural about her. There's nothing... Like if you remove all that paint, if you remove all that paint, uh, makeup, powder, color, eyeliner, everything, if you remove all that, if you minus her Botox and everything else, you will just get a very ordinary looking female. So, you know, one of them even said she looks like a circus clown. Okay, like, you know, you have this, uh, uh, what do you call that, a circus delay. Uh, if you go to Paris, you have, you know, powdered clowns that look ee, this way. So some of them felt she looked like a clown. I'm not, I'm not trying to put her down. Fine. She is hot and beautiful. Like some people find Kim Kardashian's butt, which is injected with fat, has a wow, a turn on. For me, I look at that as blubber, as, as animal fat, just put like, you know, wobbling and looks abnormal. For me, that's abnormal. If I see someone who has breasts which have been filled with silicon, I don't find that a turn on. I just find that it's 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 so abnormal. It's it's like I mean, what are we trying to do here? You know, so she may look beautiful to that limited crowd. Stop making giving her more importance than that. Okay. Uh, point number five, which you may or may not agree with me, she has a right to her opinion, guys. She has a right to her opinion. Let her say whatever she wants to say. She wants to say Filipinos are dumb. Let her say that. She wants to say Filipinos are smart. Let her say that. She wants to say Indians are dumb, Pakistanis are dumb, or Pakistanis are smart, Indians are smart. She has a right to her opinion. Now, in case, for example, suppose she comes and says, Lloyd, you're so smart. What do you want me to feel? Wow, wow, I'm so smart. In fact, I get so many people who follow me online who say, Law, you're amazing. Law, you're a genius. Law, you're... You know, when I check my bank balance, it's the same. All the buttering, all the compliments, all the great stuff. Law, I'm a fan of yours. I'm hanging up there. I'm a fridge. I'm a microwave of yours. It doesn't help my bank balance. On the flip side, if someone says, 
hey, what is that shit on your face? Oh, did your mother uh, fuck a zebra and a hippopotamus to give birth to you? Or yuck, you look like a retard. Oh, you're satanic, you're Illuminati. I, I don't care. You have a right to write your opinion. Some people feel I look shit. Some people feel I look great. In the same way, she feels, she feels that Filipinos are, you know, lower end of the society. That's her opinion. That's her opinion. Let her have that. Personally, I always tell Filipinos, you are the most creative. And that's a fact. You are the most creative, I mean, race on the planet. Uh, it's, it's a nation of amazingly creative people. If you actually look at their ability in fashion, in terms of, uh, they, they are amazing. They are simply amazing. And the sacrifices that women, women, Filipino women are capable of, because most of them are single mothers, you cannot believe, you cannot match that. In fact, they're grooming, especially Filipinos, because I have dated so many Filipinas, is world class. But on the flip side, they also have drawbacks. Drawbacks like alcohol is rampant. Most of the men, they get into multiple relationships and they, you know, break off. And uh, many of the uh, men, they like to have the hip American culture. That's why you'll see a Filipino, even if he doesn't have enough money, he'll still buy super expensive pairs of Nike or Jordans or that's how they are. That's how they are. So there is good and there is bad. Nobody's perfect. Okay. So in the same way, she has a right to her opinion. Now, point number six is Arab Muslims in the Middle East all have this habit of keeping people's passports. Okay. They have a habit of being racist because um, it's not that they do it explicitly. It's imbibed in them right from the time they are small. That is why children are thought that Islam is the true religion. Allah is the real God. Um, if someone is non-Islam or non-Muslim is, you know, like kafir or something or is, you know, bad, evil. And this is rampant. That is why if you criticize Islam or if you even joke about their prophet or even draw a cartoon, why people go berserk, it's because of their upbringing. Try doing this with a Christian. You, you can draw anything funny about Jesus or Mother Mary or nobody gives a damn. They would, yes, they would say, oh, you hurt our feelings, but they're not going to bomb or kill anyone. So um, it's, it's all about upbringing, you know, and I, I feel right from the religion and right from the culture, they need to undergo a complete revolution, which Saudi is trying, but it still has a long way to go. That is why, why do you think women are supposed to cover themselves completely like there is no place and when people have to eat they eat this way you know it's it's so ridiculous i mean uh, it's like oh men will get lustful thoughts if they look at it i'm sorry but i don't find you attractive at all i don't see anything attractive even if you did show me your face and your hair and everything else because my upbringing is you're a woman treat you with respect I don't look at you and wow, lust for you and all that. Most of the women, they look like brontosaurus cows and, you know, they're so fat and they don't look attractive at all, but they still cover themselves because they don't want to give lustful thoughts. Here's news flash for you. You don't look attractive. And I, what I think is, I think education and awareness and having a global perspective is very necessary. Okay. Now, uh, point number seven is, uh, you know, it's a two-way street. She was complaining that, oh, you are being racist towards Islam and towards the hijab and all that. Listen, bitch, you give respect, you take respect. Don't give fucking respect. Don't expect people to respect you. Then point number eight, like I told you, it's, it's in the culture, it's in the upbringing. Point number nine, this one is what I want you to think about. Asking for an apology is, is like, requesting someone fall in love with me. Now she has said whatever the shit she wants to say. Let us say it, man. Why are you asking for an apology? It's it's like if it was an apology, it would come from within. She doesn't mean it. She doesn't feel it. She doesn't subscribe to it. Why are you asking? For so it's like you're saying after they heard your feelings, say sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. And that's it. You're happy. I think people need to grow up. 
If she doesn't want to fucking apologize, don't ask for it. Uh, why, why are you even, you know, asking for an apology? Point number 10, which is very important, is please stop giving her importance. Just stop giving her importance. She's just a beauty blogger with, you know, 2.3 million followers. And she's famous on Instagram. When Instagram ceases to exist, her account ceases to exist, nobody knows her. And nobody's bothered about her. So why are you giving her importance? Just ignore her. Uh, like, you know, I keep asking me, don't you have better things to do in life other than, oh, you hurt my feelings. Oh, you did this. Let people, people keep abusing me. People keep, uh, you know, ripping me apart. I don't waste an iota of my energy looking at what people say, whether good or bad, because end of the day, my bank balance matters. I don't give a fuck whether you can say I am the most amazing, genius, great, handsome looking stud. I don't give a fuck because it doesn't help my bank balance. So you can even say you're a motherfucking dog. Your your daughter is a whore. Your wife's a bitch. And you are fucked up. Thank you very much. So one guy said, you know, your mother's a whore. I said, good. Enjoy. What do you want me to feel bad? I don't give a damn. Man. Come on. I think it's it's like. You know, when you're small and people, uh, you go and complain to your mummy, 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 call me a monkey, and you cry. You know how childish that is? This is exactly what it is. And last, if not the least, this is my message to all the Filipinos. Listen, you don't like going to Kuwait, don't go to Kuwait. You don't like a country, don't go to a country. You don't like a person, don't go to a person. Stop. Please stop making others like you, wanting respect, demanding that, oh, you need to, if you really don't like quit, don't go to quit. You don't like this person. Don't look at this person. Don't give her importance. We'll bring you down. We'll destroy it. Who the hell cares, man? Focus on you. How does it help you? How does it benefit you? What is your bank balance? What is your future? Who's taking care of your children? Who's taking care of your, you know, day-to-day -day expenses? Focus on that. That is more important than you hurt my feelings. I'll bring you down. Uh, what about, you know, how does it help you? I, if I start chasing all the people who hate me, I don't think I'm going to generate any money. So I, you know, that's what I think. That's what I think. People have a right to their opinion. People can abuse you, talk shit about you. Everyone has a right. Let them have their right. Treatment, treating human beings wrong is wrong by any standards. However, there are some people who deserve respect, some who don't, and some who need to earn it, and some people who don't deserve it no matter what. That is subjective. However, slavery is not something that I support. Racism is not something that I endorse. And uh, hatred towards anybody, any nationality, any, it's not required. Okay? Yes, I have. Uh, I have areas of religion, certain religions, which I'm totally against, uh, where, you know, they believe my religion is great. Your religion is not. We are the chosen one. You're not. Um, you know, you can eat this, but you can't eat that. You pray in this particular manner at this time of the day, you are saved. So those are individual opinions. Okay. You can't demand respect. That's so messed up. Okay. If someone wants to respect you, great. They don't want to respect you. Don't demand for it. And please stop asking for an apology. Apologize. Only then we'll feel great. What shit is this? She doesn't want to apologize. Let her not apologize. Don't give her importance. This is the main thing. So guys, these, these are my views on this matter. Let me know what you think. I, I really want to know what, what you think because I've told you what I think. Um, and, uh, you know, end of the day, I would say just live and let live, man. That's, that's where it comes down to. So live from loymasida.com. Who's loymasida and think personal branding? Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Put your comments down below. And this is me signing off for now. Take care.